are the eyes of a nation on guard against a ruthless enemy. An enemy armed with the most deadly weapon man has ever known, the H-bomb. Jet interceptors guard against his possible approach. And Nike installations, like this one, are capable of destroying his fastest and highest flying jet bombers. But some might get through even the best of defenses to strike at the industrial heart of the nation. Might get through to Illinois, our peaceful land of Lincoln, Illinois. A green and fertile land. Industrious. Productive. A land rich in resources. A prime target because of resources like these. Our $2 billion farm crop. Our great packing industry. Our tremendous factories. Vast deposits of coal. Oil in enormous quantities. And our vital transportation centers. Yes, this busy state of ours is most essential to the American economy. Industrially, we are fourth in the nation. percent of the country's steel rolls from Illinois mills. Our agricultural output is the second largest in the United States. Our meatpacking industry, the largest in the world, $600 million worth processed each year. Chicago. America's second largest metropolis. Focal point of commerce with its concentrated business and commercial enterprises. Nerve center of railways. transportation center. We in Illinois are indeed rich in sources. But this could happen. This bomb exploded far over the Pacific. But suppose it were over one of our own Illinois cities. How would it affect us? This is what your governor, the Honorable William G. Stratton, has to say. With the possibility of war, cruel, devastating war, Exploding on our very doorsteps, civil defense becomes everyone's problem. Our top military leaders tell us that not only may our cities be destroyed, but that every part of Illinois is vulnerable to radioactive fallout. Each citizen has an obligation to himself, his family, and community to know what to do if disaster strikes. As governor of Illinois, I urge your active participation in your local civil defense. You will now see, from surveys carefully prepared by your State Office of Civil Defense, what could happen if nuclear bombs were dropped over Illinois. Here is the Chicago metropolitan area with a population of 5 million. Everything inside this circle pulverized. Inside this circle, severe destruction and many casualties even in shelters. Moderate destruction here, but a good chance of survival if precautions are taken.
even here, partial damage. It adds up to approximately 1,200 square miles of damage, extending north as far as Highland Park, west to Wheaton, and as far south as Markham. An estimated 80% of the population could be saved within the Chicago metropolitan area with positive civil defense measures, without a grim total, over four million casualties. But that's not all the story. There is also the problem of fallout, a deadly rain of radioactive dust. This is a typical fallout, covering an area 40 miles wide and up to 220 miles long, downwind toward Danville. Anyone who remains in this area more than 36 hours without shelter may suffer serious effects or loss of life. But this fallout pattern can travel in any direction, toward Springfield or Dubuque, Iowa, depending upon the wind. Without evacuation or shelter, it may cause 100% casualties in the area downwind from and within 140 miles of ground zero. At 160 miles, 50% casualties. At 190 miles, 5 to 10%. At 220 miles, we believe the danger from fallout no longer will exist. Now here is Peoria, the state's second largest city, a critical target area because of its strategic industries. And here is how Peoria would be affected by an A-bomb, less powerful than the H-bomb. In the middle ring, total destruction. Severe destruction in the second, moderate damage in the third, and some destruction even in the fourth ring. Also, a large majority of the population saved with adequate warning, evacuation, or dispersal methods. Without these civil defense measures, over 89,000 casualties. Rock Island, with its concentration of heavy defense industry, with its great arsenal, is another prime target. Here is how this city would be affected by an atomic bomb. But with civil defense preparedness, the majority of the people could be moved to places of safety without heavy losses, up to 48,000 casualties. East St. Louis is another critical target, a highly concentrated commercial center vital to defense and industry. And here is our destruction analysis of an H-bomb over East St. Louis. Total, severe, moderate, and partial destruction. Again, a considerable saving of lives if civil defense is exercised without total casualties over 200,000. Add to this the danger of fallout. 220 miles in any direction, depending on the wind. Will your city be prepared if H Day comes tomorrow? <laughs> evacuation and other civil defense measures. Lives can be saved. This means practice, constant practice in orderly evacuation of our cities. Practice in the rescue of disaster victims. by 
Illinois Civil Defense First Aid Team. And by Auxiliary Firefighting Units. It means efforts by the Civil Defense Communication Networks, including amateur radio operators. And hard and unceasing work by Civil Defense Volunteers of the Ground Observer Corps. It means, too, preparations at home, assembling in advance the things that would be needed in a bomb shelter or for evacuation. Providing shelter for the family, even shelter like this, could save your life, providing you are on the fringes of the bomb area. And maintaining close contact with neighborhood civil defense wardens. Under Governor Stratton's able leadership, your state office of civil defense, headed by General Robert M. Woodward, has worked closely with scientists, industrialists, and the military. They, and civil defense volunteers like these, have made great strides in preparing the people of Illinois for a day we hope will never come. But they need more help. Let's hear what General Woodward has to say about this vital activity. The threat of atomic attack can be met if we have an alert and well-trained civil defense corps in every city and county in Illinois. As you've seen, this requires constant and unceasing preparations. Civilian volunteers are needed in every phase of civil defense. Radiological monitors, rescue teams, firefighters, auxiliary police, medical and first aid personnel, and many others. Disaster does not wait for preparedness. Make civil defense your business today.